Friends, I'm back with another machine on the Chahakimi, which is over past three hosting. I've already spawned the machine earlier, and this is the IP address of the machine. As usual, I will use the local Canon Linux, which is running with the VMware to do this penetration. Before we move forward, if you don't mind, please subscribe to my channel and leave a like below. This will help me very, very much. Thank you for your help. So without further ado, let's just get started. We can switch into the Canon Linux VM. Yeah, I can zoom in the terminal so you can see what's going on. As you can see, I use the option of the scene scan, the default, yeah, the voice scan and the default script scan. And I'll put the result into this file. The IP address has been changed. From the map, we can tell that uh, the three open ports on the target. The first one is 21, which is running FTP surface. And also this, the version information, as we know, this version doesn't have vulnerability except the, the DOS vulnerability or denial of surface, which is not what we are interested in at this moment. Of course, you also can use the search spread utility to, to test or to check out and the second one is 22, which is running SSH surface and also the version information. As we know, this version doesn't have any vulnerability. The next one is 80, which is running HTTP surface and also the version information. So what we are going to do next is to do the emulation both manually and automatically. automatically. And let's launch our browser to do the manual emulation first. And we can put the IP address of the target into the address bar. As you can see, we got the page back. Yeah, there's a message which doesn't yeah, give us anything interesting. And also, we can check the source code. There is one comment, nothing special. And also we can check whether this side has a low box file, right? Low box, but not found. Next, we can use the Nikto to do the immersion, automatic immersion. You know, Nikto is useful when we deal with the web application because it will review some information about like server information, server, in, server version information, the header information, the allowed HTTP methods, and also sometimes can email out some common files or directories. Even can some, in some case, can give us the vulnerability information if the target has such vulnerability, of course. At this, yeah, for this case, we cannot get anything like that. So I'd like to quit from the Nikto to save time. Next, we can use the GoBuster to do the directory immersion. And I can use the option to specify the word list. As usual, I'd like to use the DealBuster word list as my first word list to brute force against. And the option. text, something like this. Of course, you also can use other directory emulation tools like a DRB or DRBuster or DRSearch. There's so many available tools for the directory emulation. For me, my, my favorite tool or utility is GoBuster. And uh, in this case, we can buy the GoBuster, we can get the directory back up. I will not to save time of this video. I will not wait for this to be finished. I'd like to quit. And after we run, in, after we run GoBuster, we can get the directory back up. We can directory access this directory. As you can see, there is a file we can download to the Canon Linux, and we can move this zip file from the 
downloads directory. And then we can unzip this file, right? Correct. And as you can see, this file has been extracted to the GPG file and also give us the private key. So, sorry about the notification, the alarm. So now, yeah, we need to uh, view this file. Uh, in order to do that, we, first, we need to use the GPG import private key. Of course, I've already imported earlier, and then we can use GPG. If you're not uh, sure about how to use this GPG utility, we can use the edge option. You know, we just use this the help fun option. We can get uh, usage of this utility, and we can GPG and the option of D, which means decrypt the this this file, and we can yeah we can output the result into for example customer X L X X. Press enter. As you can see, it's correct, it's right. All right, as you can see, we got, we retrieved the, the file from this GPG file. Next, of course, this is the Linux uh, machine, the Kali Linux, so we, we, we cannot use like a Microsoft Office to open up this one. For me, I'd like, maybe you also can use other way. For me, I can use the online viewer, online XLS viewer, Open up, and we can upload our file to this target, uh, to this site. And then you can get the username, custom name, and password. Of course, you can copy this information and generate the generate the, the username dictionary and also the password dictionary. And uh, I've already done that earlier, as you can see. Yes, yeah, sorry about that one the voice noise and we can cut out the username and also the passwords dictionary so next we can use the hydra to make cracking yeah for the surface ftp or ssh of course the i'd like to crack the ssh surface first because if if this can can be succeeded or it can be successful, then we can directly get the initial for the hold on the target. So I can use the Hydra, and we can use the uppercase L to specify the user name dictionary, and the password dictionary, and the SSH, and followed by the IP address of the target. We can copy the IP address of the target from my notebook. Press enter because the, the both dictionary are very small, so this will not take a uh, long time at all. Next, we can brute force against the FTP surface, right? As you can see, the Hydra has successfully retrieved the compilations of the username and its corresponding password. We can note it down this information credentials to our notebook i think this is the good practice right note down key information during the process of the exportation all right now we then can can log into the target and press enter we can copy the username and the password to log in to the target. We can copy. All right, login successful. We can list the files by the command ls. As you can see, yeah, there's some files and also the backups. And here, as you can see, very interesting file index.html. So it looks like we are inside the the wwloot directory in other words we can upload our reverse shell.php file to this directory and then we can get the initial for the hold right 
So how to do? We can copy. You already prepared the reverse shell.php file. You can get get it from the pen test monkey website. And after you download this file, you need to make some modification. To be specifically, then you need to change the IP address of the attacking machine. Anyway, I have already prepared uh, this shell.php file. Next, we need to upload this file through FTP. And uh, we can put use put command shell. Yes, successful. All right, next we can set up the listener and uh, then access this shell.php file. And then I think we can get the initial for the hold on the target. Shell. <clears throat> it looks like it's working. Yeah, we have already got the shell from the target, and we can run the command ID, which is Apache. Can we navigate to the home directory? We can. And can we find the Python? Which Python? Yeah, Python is not there. Python 2, Python 3? Yeah, Python 3 is not there. So I think this shell is very weird. So how to do? Maybe we need to do the immersion because right now we have already got the username and password. We can navigate to home direct. Can we change or switch our shell to the users, James and product, docs, for example, parallel, docs. And we can copy this username. Yeah, we did. It's successful. However, when we try to use this credential to log in via SSH, you will get error. We can SSH parallel and the IP address of the target. Yes, as you can see, permission denied. It, uh, it means that the password-based collection has been disabled. It only, the target only allows the public key authentication, which is fine. Okay, so now how to do? We need to, yeah, we need to, yeah, we need to up, upload the Nimpia share script to see whether we can find some vectors to make lateral movement or, or escalate our privilege, okay? Temp directory. And now we can go back. So yeah, I've already got the Nimpia share script already. So, can we now, you know, this one is not a very good one, right? Can we get the, can we upload the public key and then, you know, from here, we have already know that the target only allows the public key based authentication, right? So now we can go to the home directory. Go to the parallel docs. And we can go to the SSH directory. All right. So maybe we can generate the the key pairs and then append our public key into the authorized keys, right? So now how to do? We can use we can use SSH key generate command to generate as ASA key pair. And we can save these key pairs under the current working directory. No passphrase is required. So now we can, yeah, we can upload. Can we run the, do we have the double get? Double get is not there. Q, Q is there. So now we can upload the, the public key to the target. We can set up the web server locally. And now we can go back. And we can use dub, not a w get q http 
and IP address of the Caninix. And public key. Oh, not one, not this one. We need to queue. We need to save into the file. Copy. And then we can write or save into the same file name. It's done. Yeah, it's there. Then we can cut this file and append to the home pal docs SSH authorized keys. Yeah, no error. Now I think we can we can open up another tab. We can SSH ID and the paradox. Now we can copy the IP address of the target. Yeah, as you can see, it's successful. Now we can run all commands like uh, wget or not there. Q, yeah, interesting. So now we can navigate to the temp directory and run the NIMPIR share script. So next we can upload the NIMPIR share script from my Linux. So no Q. And the IP address of the Kani Linux. Nimpier. Write into the Nimpiers. Okay, it's done. We can make it executable. Yeah, I need to rename this file. Then we can run this share script to see whether we can get some interesting information. You know, Nympia share script can help us automatically connect information about the target and try to find some the vectors, possible vectors for us to elevate or privilege. For example, like process information, for example, like a Chrome job information, yeah, it's done. Then we can scroll up the capability information, SUID information. Here, no loot squash, analyzing NFS exports a file. However, when we do the MF scanning, we didn't recognize the the NFS surface running, right? So in other words, maybe this NFS is accessible locally. And uh, no loot squash option allow us to access uh, this shell with the loot privilege. So we need to exploit this option. So how to do? First, we need to know, you know, we can we can check the whether the yeah as you can see this port number is used by the NFS. So in order to access this locally accessible share, we need to set up the port forwarding. In order to do that, we can open up another tab. And we can use SSH and option and paradox. And we can copy. And also we need to use the L option, uppercase L option, the local port number. Yeah, I like to use the same port number and the remote address, IP address, and 
the pod number, remote pod number. Press enter. <clears throat> okay, it's done. Now I think we can mount the shear. We can navigate to this one. We can mount and the T. The type is NFS. And uh, all right. And of course, we need to set up the local directory first. File exists. We can make DR. Uh, we can set up the remote share. And then we can mount the type is an FS. Because we have already set up the port forwarding. So we can use this local IP address or local host to access. And then, and because we use the use the default port number, so we do not need to, to specify the port number here. And then should it be remote share. All right. Let's press enter. Yeah, it's done. Then we can go into this directory. As you can see, we got the, yeah, this is, I think this is belong to the James home directory. And then we can get out the user flag. Even we can Go into the SSH directory. Can get the private key of the gym user. All right. So we can copy this private key and open up another tab and create the gyms. And we can paste in here. In order to use this private key, we need to change the mode. Then we can use this private key to access the target with the user name James. And uh, IP address. <clears throat> All right, and now we can list files. Because, yeah, we have already got the, the shell through NFS. And because the option of the no loot squash is enabled, it means that uh, we can, can access can for example can have root privilege to to do for example like a change mode to change ownership for a specific file so how to exploit this known root squash vulnerability or option first we can copy the bin bash binary we can copy to the current home directory we can name it to json whatever name Next, we can go back to here. As you can see, yeah, we have already got this binary, and this binary, <coughs> sorry, is bash binary. And in order to use this binary with the root privilege, we need to change ownership to the root in JSON, and then also we can. Add the SUID binary bit to this file. Then we, if we go back to the James shell, run this JSON with P option, then we can get the root shell. As you can see, we can retrieve the root flag without any issue. All right, so that's pretty much it. I'd like to see you in the next one. Bye.